Welcome back for another video. Uh, this one's going to be about the custom event system. Um, so we're going to learn how to uh, trigger an event using the custom the custom event triggers and then returning values back to other game objects. But first what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this real quick. Uh, I want to describe how this works just in a graphic before we get started. So let's do that real quick. Let's say I have three game objects. One, two, three, okay. And then let's say each one of these game objects, we're going to trigger an event. So we go one, two, three, okay. Now, each one of those triggers is going to be pointed at another game object or a event within the current game object. So if we go here, we're gonna do game object, game object, game object, okay? Now in this first one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fire that off, okay? Game object, we're gonna trigger, and what it's gonna do, it's gonna send over to this game object and then that's it. This game object does whatever it does with that trigger, so it's just the event that's going to happen on that game object. Now the next one, what we're going to do is that we're going to say, all right, I need you to trigger, but I also need you to send some things along with it. So let's say we have a string that goes along with it, okay? And then let's have an int that goes along with it, okay? So we have that, and then what happens, it sends it over to this game object, and then ends there. Okay, now in the third case, we have the same situation, okay? We're sending, the game object is going to send to the trigger. The trigger is then going to send to the game object. And then let's say we have a string this time, okay? And now that string may have triggered something over here on this game object. So that game object then, triggers again, triggers again, and let's say it was an int this time. Okay, so you're making a loop. So you've got a game object that triggers, sends to the game object, the game object does whatever it does, sends it back to the trigger, the trigger sends that over to the other game object, and then you're done. So you could repeat this over and over and over if you had to. Now that we kind of get the idea how that works, let's go through these one at a time. And we're going to be going back and forth, so you may have to check this out a couple times to understand it fully. So what we have here in this first uh, game object, this is the object to trigger. So this is where our event will actually sit. In this case, I have an event that's just going to set a single trigger variable with a bool. Okay, so when this is executed from wherever it is, it's just going to set the single trigger. Let me go ahead and run this. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to take a look for this one. Here's the single trigger, no arguments. So if I hit the space bar, it's going to send that over to that game object. Now, one of the things you have to remember is this find uh, game object, this is going to be needed if you are going to point it at another uh, another game object. Now you can use a variable or whatever you need. Um, if you want it to be more performant, you just put it as a variable and then get, get variable versus using find. Uh, for demonstration purposes, this is great. Okay, so that's all there is to this one. What it's going to do as soon as I hit space, it's going to go to that game object and it's going to send this trigger to that object. Now, somewhere in this object, in one of these events, is that trigger. And here it is right here. So if I change this back to true, now if I come over here and I hit space again, okay, see it triggered one time, and now we're set to true. So our variable is now true. So we can do that over and over and over using those events. Okay, very, very straightforward on that one. Now the next one is where we are going to retrieve a value using this event. So in this 
event, we have a trigger with arguments is the name of this trigger. And what it uh, what this one does when it's executed is it just comes in and says, okay, what arguments came through? Okay, so I have two arguments coming along with this. There are, say here, this number two. That, that's the number of arguments. So if I had five, it's going to put as many arguments as I want. So right now I have two, and this number has to match the number that are on the trigger or you'll error out. Okay, so argument zero is a true or false, and then argument one is an integer. So if I come back here to my object triggering, and I look down here, this one is tab. Here's my trigger name. Here's the object to trigger. And here's the bool I'm sending, and here's the integer I'm sending. So if I come over here and I hit tab, it's going to send 50 and true back to this game object. So true and 50 are returned. And now it's the same kind of thing here. You can undo this and change this. And once I come back over here and I hit tab, it's going to do the same thing where it sends it again. Now the last one's a little more confusing because you're creating that loop, the very last one from the graphic. So here's the trigger name. This is what it's going to be looking for when it triggers. Okay. And then it's going to do something. But before we do this part, um, let's go ahead and go back because it is a little bit confusing. So in here, I'm triggering this trigger with the return key. It's going to do the same thing with the object of the object of trigger, which is this object. In this case, I have a trigger name. Now this trigger name is going to send back to that other game object so it can return it back to itself. Because we have a trigger here that once it sends to here, it does its thing and then it triggers it again based off of this name and it comes back and finds this object to return a value. So then we come down and we got the next argument, this. So or, or self, either it depends on your version. So what that's doing is it's gonna send along the object because you have to do this part on the other game object, right? So you have to tell it where it's coming, where it's gonna go. In this case, that other trigger is coming back to here because that's where this trigger is. Okay, and now what we're doing is we're just sending a, a regular integer. Okay, we send that integer through as argument two. And if we take a look back over here, what I've done down here is we have that trigger okay here's that trigger name here's that object triggering which is where it's going to be returned to and then we take that argument which is one i'm just adding five to it and then returning six back to the other object so you see here it executed here and then brought down six so that's really all there is to this it's very straightforward once you understand that this is just these are one way and then this is kind of a loop. Um, and you can use these in a, in a whole wide range of things. I mean, it's it's pretty impressive little function. Um, I really, really enjoy using these. All right, thanks guys, have a good one.